Canada's average rent price leapt 11% in 2022 and will keep on rising. This was the headline of an article that was just published a couple of days ago on stories.com, which is a local outlet that highlights all the news and activity happening in the world of the Canadian real estate market. And this headline should not come as a complete shock to everyone out there. I know tenants, um, prospective tenants, especially in the city of Toronto, are well aware of the fact that their monthly rental expenses have absolutely skyrocketed over the course of 2022. So when we take a step back and look at the real estate market as a whole over the past six or seven months or so, it makes total sense on why rentals have increased anywhere from 10 to 25%, depending on what market you're really focusing on. Interest rates go up, less people can actually afford to qualify for a mortgage, even though the prices have come down in most markets and for the buying and selling markets. And then the rental market gets hit with even more demand from buyers who are now deciding to wait when there weren't enough units for them to occupy in the first place. The average price of rent remained above $2,000 in December. The actual number for Canada's average came in at $2,005. And this was actually the second straight month where the average has been above that shiny number. Um, maybe not so shiny in this case, but above that $2,000 mark. This was also the first calendar year since 2019 where Canada's real estate market displayed a positive rental rate increase. Um, but you also have to remember that we are coming from the pandemic where rental rates were extremely, extremely low. Quick side note, when the world shut down, I was able to secure my clients a two-bedroom place in downtown Toronto for $2,000 flat. Um, yeah, it was a smaller unit. It was one of the ones where the kitchen and the living room are kind of combined, but I've never seen anything like that, so that's a pretty crazy story. Now, a huge reason on why the rental market was able to rebound so quickly was due to the fact that there weren't as many active buyers as I previously mentioned. A lot of people got pushed to the rental market, um, but with this being said, rent growth in Canada was seen to follow density patterns and population growth in Canada we had a record-breaking year in terms of immigration and how many people we actually let into the country which directly correlates with the uptick in prices that landlords are charging for their rental units a positive outlook for the rental market in 2023 is that new rental supply is set to rise to a multi-decade high, which will obviously give prospective tenants more options to choose from in the near future. I know I talk a lot about the Toronto market, but Calgary is another place where rents have been accelerating at rapid paces. The strong momentum of Calgary's economy can largely be attributed to the attraction for people wanting to move there and live and work. Um, in December 2022, their rental growth was seen to be 22%. 2.6%, which was good for second place behind Toronto with an average price of 1816 per month. A little bit more on what you can expect for the 2023 rental market. I know I started off this video with a scary news headline that was in circulation as of late, but reports are forecasting that rent prices will increase around 5% in Canada across the board this year, which isn't anything drastic when you think about it. And it's actually more on par with the long-term historical average for rent inflation. I want to conclude with a way that you as a renter can hedge yourself against rental inflation. I put out a video on my Instagram a couple of days ago that discussed co-living options and how you can benefit from buying with a best friend, with a girlfriend, with a boyfriend, or any other business partner at large. If you bought a one plus one unit with a separate bedroom or a two bedroom unit in the greater Toronto area for $615,000, which is possible by the way, and you put 10% down or $61,000 down for your down payment with a 4.64 um, five year fixed rate for your interest rate to make things easy for this example, amortized over 25 years, your monthly payments will come out to be around $3,200 per month. Now say the unit has a maintenance fee of $500 per month. That brings the total carrying cost to around $3,700, not including your mortgage insurance or property taxes. But still, this bill split two ways is $1,850 for each partner versus $2,400 a month if you were to rent a one bedroom in the city by yourself. Over five years, you would be spending over $144,000 to a landlord, which you'll absolutely never see again, versus building equity and actually being able to realize or get access to the money that you put into your investment. Of course, you have to have the same five-year minimum outlook or plan to your investment partner, but this is just one way on how you can get into the market and have your money start working for you. This example also does not account for the appreciation of your investment. Never bank on that 100%. Make sure that you are always running the numbers, but if the unit does appreciate, that is a massive bonus and you'll be able to get more money back once you make that sale. The mortgage process is also much easier at the end of the day if you have more than one person on title, which is why co-living 
living is an attractive option to utilize in my opinion. If you have questions about this avenue or any other tips about how you can make your first purchase, please give me a shout. Until next time, remember to trust the process and fall in love with your journey.